Community. I work with the Disability Support Resources Office, and my role is Assistive Technology Coordinator. I just noticed that I left my contact information off of that slide. Um, my email address is sykesje at gvsu.edu. And the telephone number, if you wanted to contact me by phone for some reason, 616-331-2490. So I'm going to pick up where Megan, or Megan, sorry, Megan left off and uh, talk about assistive technology, the types of technology that students with disabilities will commonly use. Oftentimes I'm asked, what is assistive technology? Well, there's a definition. And there it is. It's any device that is designed to and used to increase, maintain, or improve the functional capability of people with disabilities. A lot of these items are useful to everyone. A lot of these, these are especially designed devices also. Colored cellophane has been used to aid people with reading. It's been shown that if uh, a person lays red or blue cellophane over printed materials, oftentimes that helps them clarify the print on the page. Removable highlighter tape can be used in books if a student wants to highlight without actually marking with ink in their book. A hearing aid could be considered assistive technology for a person that has, uh, is deaf or is hard of hearing. And if a person has a limitation in the use of their arms, a straw may be considered assistive technology if it allows them to go out and have a beverage with friends. Other types of things you might not consider assistive technology, but things that people use every day that would fit the definition, eyeglasses, curb cuts on the sidewalk, and public restrooms without doors. Public restrooms without doors were designed for ease of folks who use wheelchairs. But when you think about it, for the rest of us, there's no door to push on to leave. We don't have to touch a door leaving. Now, what I'm doing today is talking about technology that is beneficial to students who have disabilities. But a lot of the things I'm going to show you are useful to all students. I'm going to talk about uh, one in particular that's a text reader. It's designed to allow people who have learning disabilities, like dyslexia or perhaps attention deficit disorder, Read, read Word documents or things that are imported into Word. But as a bonus, for the rest of us, we can use that as a document proofreader. There's no better way to proofread a document than reading it out loud or having someone else read it. With this tool, you can use your computer to read the document back to you. One thing that you will notice about a lot of assistive technology is it's expensive. There's a lower customer base, a lot of folks buy Microsoft Word. Not many people buy a screen reader. Screen readers then tend to cost a lot more money. I'm going to show you a package that will allow a person to scan printed material and bring it into the computer to have it read out loud. The retail price on that is $995. I don't know too many students that have that kind of money to drop on, on a piece of software. The student price, the company will cut the price back to 495 but that's still quite a chunk of change. So what I've done at Grand Valley is try to find lower cost solutions for students. Um, there's a lot of tools available for free. There's a lot of tools that are available that fit pretty much anybody's budget. Um, text Aloud is a text reader that I've worked with with a lot of students that costs only $29.95 far cheaper than the $500 or $1,000 program that I showed you on the last slide. There's even free software available. We'll take a look at some of that. I wanted to start out, though, moving away from computer equipment for just a second and talk about the LiveScribe Smart Pen. I was using this to take notes during Megan's presentation. And um, uh, has anyone heard of the LiveScribe Smart Pens? Anyone used one of them? These are I think the coolest tool ever. I think all students should have these. Um, I went and bought one myself after the office bought one for me to work with, and I use it in different, uh, different, different venues. LiveScribe has designed a pen that utilizes special paper that has a dot pattern printed on it. You can't, if, oh, can I pick on you? If you look at that paper real, real, real closely, can you see a dot pattern on it? It looks kind of hazy. Okay, 
it is very, very difficult to see. But there is a, dot, a micro dot pattern on the page, and the pen has a camera in the pen. And the, the camera tracks the dots on the page. It also records, and it's possible to link then the written notes with the audio. I took notes, and I should be able to go over here and tap and the pen should, yeah, I love it when technology doesn't behave. There it goes. And I can go over here. Maybe you can do it better that way. What it's doing is it is replaying the audio that was recorded when I wrote those notes. So I don't have to listen to an entire lecture over again. I can tap where I know I missed something, and I can go back and repeat the lecture at that point. There's also desktop software that works with this. Question. Yes. Can you, uh, is it, is it recorded? <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Yes, you have controls at the bottom of the page to start and stop recording. So you, what you would do with their notebook, with the LiveScribe notebook, is you would tap on record, and the pen would begin recording. You would take your notes, and then when you're done, or when you want to stop for a time, tap the stop button, and then the pen stops recording. Did that answer your question? Yes. Okay. And what I just did was I have connected the pen to my computer. And the pen has uploaded the pages. And it should have uploaded the pages, and apparently it didn't upload the pages. Well, we can go over to another page, though, to show you any. Oh, wait, there it is. It's transferring. Okay. So what it's doing now, I'm transferring both the audio and the written notes that were captured by the pen to my computer. And I'm building a digital copy of the notebook. There, you see up at the top where I have three active notebooks? We're working with single subject notebook number three. And if you look down here, page 48, 49, 50, 51, those are notes that I took today that are appearing on the computer. The visuals have transferred. We're working on transferring the audio right now. Students can work in up to eight different notebooks at a time. There's eight unique college rule notebooks that the pen recognizes. And they can also rename the notebooks because single subject notebook number three doesn't mean a whole lot. The chemistry 115 fall 2012 would mean a lot more. Now we have the audio. And now I can play this back. The biggest thing is, and a lot of these guidelines you'll see really apply to all kinds of documents. Nice. It's just that we use the style features as well. Um, instead of hyperlinking words like click here. So I have a digital copy of the notebook, and I can keep all of my notes on the computer if I want. And we think it's a great, great way for students who have attention deficit disorder or other disabilities to uh, record their notes. Some students will take just skeleton notes on paper. And then they'll go back and tap on key words and listen to that chunk of the lecture again. And they're able to, to understand better that way. And in our disability services office, we, we offer a note-taking service where students will find a volunteer in class, another student in class, to take notes. And we pay that person $100 at the end of the semester for being a note-taker for the student. It's kind of a nice bonus. It, they are actually taking notes for themselves, too but they're sharing the notes with the student. But we have a lot of students that like the pen better. We've supplied a couple of students with pens for a semester to try. We encourage them to purchase them, but uh, we have loaned them for a, a few weeks to try or for a semester. We think it makes the student a lot more independent to take their own notes. And let's face it, there's nothing like your own notes. Somebody else's notes are okay, but these are far, your own notes are far better. Yes, sir. Most of the research would suggest that students do best when they take notes on an instructor-provided um, PowerPoint or notes 
mm -hmm. their lunch materials, et cetera, and mm -hmm. trying to both capture information and focusing on presentation at the same time. Mm -hmm. Is there any possible way that instructor material, like PowerPoint slides, simple example, mm -hmm. can be provided to a student ahead of time in this? Because obviously the paper is very important. Mm -hmm. The paper is key, yep. Right. Yes, there's a couple of ways that can be done. Uh, the pa pages separate from the notebook very nicely. There's perforations so that they can be removed cleanly, and a student could print the PowerPoint on what they call the dot paper, LiveScribe's notebook. There's also printable notebooks in the software. If a student owns the software, they can go to printable notepads and they can print these notepads, which are unique. The dot pattern is unique compared to the, the other notebooks, so the computer recognizes it properly. The PowerPoint will not be brought up into the computer. There's no way to get the PowerPoint presentation to the computer. But the written notes would then have the PowerPoint on the PowerPoint information on them. Also, LiveScribe has another way. There's multiple notebooks. These are the college-ruled notebooks geared towards students, but if you and I go to a conference, we're probably not going to want to take a notebook like this. There are, I have it actually put away right now, but there's smaller A5 size notebooks, there's pocket size notepads, and there's even sticky notes with dots on it. I tell the students, you know, you can, write a, you can write a message to your roommate, please take out the garbage and stick it on the refrigerator. And if, this, if the roommate says, well, I never saw that because I took it down, crumpled it up, and threw it away, you can pull it up on your computer and say, oh, yes, I did leave that for you. Okay. You had a question? You can actually have the student print the PowerPoint You could, yeah. Yep, it wouldn't be in the notebook. They have to remove it from the notebook. But, but the sticky notes, the, other, the option with the sticky note is if the student had um, uh, printed out the PowerPoint on regular computer lab paper, they could use the sticky notes and, and, and write notes uh, and place it in the notes section of the, the printout. So that's another method. Yeah. yeah. So, any other questions on the live scribe pen? Yes. Yes. Uh, they have a couple of models. One, one of the models, the basic model that connects with your computer, that model runs 129 and you can find it on Amazon.com, oftentimes a little bit cheaper than that. There's another model that they've just come out with called the, the Sky Smart Pad, and that one bypasses synchronizing with the computer and it synchronizes with Evernote instead. Uh, is any, with Evernote. Is anyone familiar with Evernote? It's an app on the... Yeah, yeah. Evernote is a place out in the cloud where you can store notes, where students can set up an, an account for free and store notes. So they can, if a student, let's say not using the pen, wanted to take notes on their computer, they could save those notes in Evernote out in the cloud somewhere. And then they could view them on any web-enabled computer or a tablet or a smartphone. There's an Android app, there's an iOS app for that. Um, and the Sky Smart Pen sends the notes right into Evernote instead of to the computer. And then the paper. The paper. And the paper, the no these notebooks are sold in four packs, and the four packs list at $25, so about $6 a notebook. Not terribly expensive compared to what you probably pay in the college bookstore for, for notebooks. What was the Sky version? The Sky version starts at $169. And that includes uh, the, mem the necessary membership to, um, to Evernote. Okay, any other questions on the pen? Okay, there's the basics on it right there. This PowerPoint will be available to you, I guess, later too, after, the, after this is over. Um, wanted to move back to computer technology, and I've got to really move here. Um, wanted to talk about screen magnifiers and how folks who have low vision are able to use the computer. Screen magnifiers enlarge the computer display so that someone who has a visual impairment is able to see the computer, but, or see, be able to see the screen. Other things that can often be done are ways to improve the usability of the mouse. 
I mean, if you have low vision, trying to use a mouse is very difficult. But you can enlarge the mouse pointer, or you can make that mouse pointer giant, a giant green mouse pointer, or put a crosshairs on it. Uh, Magic is a screen magnifier that we use at Grand Valley. We make it available in our labs for students, and it can magnify up to 32 power, which you don't want to see because you know you're looking at a, a half a letter on the screen, really. Uh, magnified view options, you can have a full screen or you can have a magnified area of the screen docked or a little lens you can move around. I'm going to demonstrate this in a second. I can also make that mouse pointer giant green with crosshairs or some other color with some other uh, location scheme. And these commercial screen magnifiers also smooth the font so the font is easier to read. Magic looks like that when it is running. And I am going to launch it right here. And magic is right here. And it is going to open to 2x power in a minute, apparently. And OK, there it is. And it, because this is, because I'm not on campus, it can't find the license server and it's going to run in 40 minute mode, which is just fine by me. Because I don't have 40 minutes and I wouldn't want to talk about this for 40 minutes anyway. And where did it go? Did I close it? Let's try this again. Well, okay, so magic doesn't want to run. Well, that's okay. I was going to also show you the built-in magnifier in Windows. And so I can show you screen magnification that way. Magic, if a student purchases it, that's 490. Magic screen. Okay, it's working. It just took a little while. We're going to run as demo. Oh, it wants me to reboot my computer. So I'm not, I'm not going to do that. So I'm not sure why it's doing that. Uh, it has to do with the demo. But $500 for a screen magnifier is a little steep for a lot of students. And so I point them to, on their Windows computer in the accessories group, there's a collection of programs for ease of access. And one of them is called Windows Magnifier. And magnifier, there it is, it just magnified the computer screen by 2x. And it makes it much easier to see. If I had been able to show you magic, I could have showed you ways to improve the mouse pointer too, but I know you can all imagine a giant green mouse pointer with little red crosshairs on it. Mag uh, the Windows magnifier can increase up to I'm not sure what the limit is. I'm at 4x right now. Notice the text is starting to fall apart where I see where it says sample book. It's becoming harder to read that. At high levels of magnification, these screen ma these low cost or free screen magnifiers typically do that. Commercial software like Magic or its competitor Zoom Text um, will not cause the 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 breakup of the font. Okay, moving along here. Megan talked about screen readers, and screen readers are really software that folks who are blind or have low vision will use if they need to hear text off of the computer screen. The one that we use on campus is called JAWS. Uh, there are others. JAWS is the world's most popular, partially because they will give it away for free and make it run in 40-minute mode so that you have, to, you have to reboot your computer every 40 minutes in order to keep it going. But everybody gets hooked on it, and then they're willing to spend $1,000 buying it. But it really is a fantastic program. It allows complete control of the Windows operating system, Microsoft Office, and other supported software. A person can navigate menus using keys. They have to learn a set of keystrokes about this long, about this thick, actually, in order to, to under, understand how to use it. But the computer can then be controlled by keystrokes completely, and uh, text can be read back. I know that JAWS is not going to run for us because it's like magic. It's in the 40-minute mode, and it wants me to reboot my computer. I can show you another screen reader, however, and that one is called um, NVDA. I like this one because, number one, it's free. 
compared to $1,000, students like this. It also has a por portable, portable version that will run for Welcome to Mate Modified 6 slash 10 slash 2000. Well, okay, a desk, not a dialogue, but it, but it new. I'm not a big fan of the voice that it comes with. <laughs> it is possible to use other voices with this, though. Um, I am going to switch it very quickly here over to over to and from eSpeak I'm going to go to Microsoft SAPI 5 and I will hopefully get um, a voice that I can live with. The one that comes New with page it, down desktop much nicer desktop Grand Valley State University assistant minimum Grand Valley Okay. This is a document called Grand, Grand Valley, Valley State, State University Assisted Technology Inventory doc doc. That's Shortcut 41 to 42. Grand Valley State University Assisted Technology Inventory doc doc. Compatibility mode Microsoft Word. Grand Valley State University Assisted Technology Inventory doc doc. Compatibility mode Microsoft Word document. Okay. The camp Grand you know what it is. Page Grand Valley State University supports assisted technology in a number of public locations. Essentially each campus windows computer lab is equipped with one locations. Essentially each campus windows computer lab is equipped with one computer workstation in an easily okay. access. And she will keep reading. You get the idea. Um, but this is not only reading the text. If you noticed it was giving me the title of the document. It was also informing me that this is in compatibility mode. If I use the Alt F keystroke Oh, I'm Grand uh, Valley no. State University Assisted Technology Inventory doc doc compatibility mode Microsoft Word. Okay, I was hoping that Ribbon I would tool. hear the menus. Full and it did speaker not read the menus. Mixed. But it gives me additional information beyond just the text in the document. If I had internet access right now and if I went into Grand Valley's Blackboard, I could show you um, how to navigate through Blackboard with a screen reader like this. This will work with, my, with, with Mozilla Firefox and Internet Explorer, so students can use this if they need the auditory feedback. Any questions on the magnifier or on um, screen readers? Okay, I'm going to shut this down. How, how am I doing on time? NVDA. NVDA. Website for NVDA is NV, that stands for Non-Visual Desktop Access. It's nvda-project.org. Yep. Okay, we will we'll use that in place of JAWS. And then there are text readers. I'm going to end up skipping a number of things in, in the interest of time because I think I'm down to my last couple of minutes here. But... Win Wizard, I'm going to bypass that. That allows a person to scan printed material and actually bring it into the computer. You can envision that happening because you've used photocopiers. So you know what it's like to scan a document. Megan already mentioned, be sure you're using what's called the OCR step. Okay, OCR stands for Optical Character Recognition. When you scan something on a photocopier, or if I scan something with Win, all that's happening is the computer's taking a picture of that document. There's no real text there. If you use OCR, which Adobe Reader can do, or I'm sorry, Adobe Acrobat has the ability to do, the photocopiers have the ability to do it, and software like WinWizard have the ability to do it, the computer then analyzes that image. It looks at what's in that image, and it determines what is text, and it transcribes a text layer. It's an invisible layer in the document below the visual layer that has editable text in it. Well, it's invisible, so I guess it's not really editable because you can't get to it to edit it, but it's there. And that's what the computer reads from. The computer doesn't read from that visual layer. That's just an image. When you scan with your home scanner, all you're doing is taking a picture of a document. You're saving it as a JPG, or maybe you can save it as a PDF, but it is just an image. When we scan books for students with disabilities, we use, we don't actually use WinWizard because we'd have to use it with a flatbed scanner and we wouldn't be able to get very far very fast. But, it's like I bumped a button. Um, 
software such as WinWizard creates editable text in a document that can be read out loud. And then we distribute those files to students. If I were running Win, it would look, uh, a scanned image of Mutiny on the Bounty would look like this. And Win also creates a text only view that takes out that graphic and, give, and shows you the text that's going to be read out loud. Win is one of the few packages that lets you interact with the optical character recognition recognized text. It lets you see both. Um, what I wanted to show you was software like Natural Reader and software like Word Talk, which is something that really any student can benefit from. Word Talk, well, Natural Reader is where we'll start. Natural Reader is available as a free text reading software. At Grand Valley, what we do is we produce, we produce books by scanning images and saving the text and distributing, distributing the files to students who have disabilities. Students might have blindness, they might have visual impairments, they might have learning disabilities like dyslexia or perhaps ADHD. And we distribute the books to them in a format that they can open up in their favorite text reader, natural reader being one that is commonly used. If I go to my desktop and I go to my sample book folder, we're going to look at a book called Talking About People. I have the printed book right here. This was an anthropology textbook that we used at one time. And here it is. If you're sitting in the front row, you can see that chapter one doesn't quite look like this, like it, on the screen, doesn't quite look like it does in the book because the columns are not maintained. But all the text is actually there. And then a student can select where they want to begin reading. And I've got to unmute my volume here. It was derived from the Greek words anthropos and logos, meaning man study. In fact, many introductory texts bear pretentious titles like the study of man. And the speed of the text, the speed of the reader can be adjusted. And if a person has different voices on their computer, they can even change the voice. There's an Australian voice that I, I like to demonstrate. It happens to be my favorite. This is not included on the computer. This is... In fact, many introductory texts bear pretentious titles like the study of mankind or humanity. It's one, one of my favorites. She's very pleasant to listen to. That came in with another piece of software. It's not included. You, you've been listening to Microsoft Anna, who comes with Windows, Windows Vista and Windows 7. Uh, this is a program that our students will often use to, to read their books. They need to read the books out loud. The last one that I want to show you, because I know I only have like a minute left, is something called Word Talk. And I'm going to go back to this document, the, the sample document that I've been working with. And this is a free text reader. And it's not a Microsoft product. It is called WordTalk. It came from the University of Edinburgh in Scotland. And it's been developed under some grant from the government of Scotland. The guy that's written it up, his name's Rod McCauley. And you can find the, the software at uh, www.wordtalk.org.uk. It adds a toolbar into Microsoft Word. And the toolbar has functions like start reading, stop reading, read only the current paragraph, only the current sentence, only the current word. I'm not sure why that's there. That doesn't seem to be there doesn't be a whole lot of point to that. And then read selected text. So if you highlight a chunk of text, it'll read it to you. And I summary. Brief summary. Grand Valley State University supports assistive technology in a number of publications. It also spotlights locations. each individual word. Essentially, each campus this Windows is a free computer plug lab for Microsoft one Word. computer workstation in an easy and accessible it allows location with assistive technology software. Students to access their books if they're opening their books in Word, but it also allows the rest of us to proofread our documents so that we know what's in there. Let's face it, we've all reworked documents, and they no longer say what we think they say. It's a free tool that anyone can use. Uh, this also has a talking spell check. I just wanted to point that out. Um, I've misspelled the word accessible. Now in Word, if I right click on that misspelled word, I get choices and I could select. But someone with dyslexia, they need to hear those. So if I position the cursor in there and I go over to add-ins and I click on this ABC, it shows me words spell choices, but it reads them. Accessible. 
accessible, accusable. It gives those same choices. And it goes one step further. I can get synonyms for accessible, if there were any. Accusable. We'll try accusable. Whoops, I'm hitting the wrong button, aren't I? There we go. Nearby, available, reachable. So I can work on my, my word choices, and then I can go and I can replace the spelling or replace the word. Any questions on any of that? This is called Word Talk, and uh, it's a free plugin for Microsoft Word. Works with all versions of Word from Word 97 through 2010, and I think 2013 is coming out soon. Is that correct, Megan? I'm thinking I've heard something about that. I don't know if it's compatible with that, but they will no doubt update it. I'm seeing people walk like there's a lunch out there. I don't want to keep yes. you from lunch, so. <laughs>